we're back for almost the last time. Obviously, we can we can have some surprises coming up. Uh, but welcome back. Uh, this is uh, the rest of us, the weekly podcast discuss discussing. I can't talk. It's it's the look true look, feelings. With- <laughs> With the daytime saving thing and me being completely confused about timings today, I'm just tired. <laughs> so yeah, I'm like, oh my god, it came as a surprise that it started earlier, and I was like, oh, what the hell is happening? Anyway, so this is you guys the- finally got to watch it at the same time as me, actually. Yeah, <laughs> it did. Yeah, it's which is like finally. Um, so this is the rest of us, the weekly podcast discussing <laughs> thank you every single episode of the last of us there you go i got it yes I it. <laughs> uh i did it we have our lovely cast the wonderful erica the great nick and me salty lily k i'm still salty <laughs> it didn't go away <laughs> so just be prepared <laughs> be prepared for the salt <laughs> Yes, so for the last time, uh, we are watching the final episode today directly after it's aired. It literally just finished like 20 minutes ago. So it's very fresh and new in the world. Uh, so if there's any talking points or things that we may have missed in this podcast, uh, just bear with us on that. And we'd love to chat to you about it during the week on our social media and on YouTube. If you're watching this uh, during the premiere, hit us up in the live chat down below. Or is happy and cheery and have all kinds of fun down there. So join us. All right, let's get right into it. Yeah, it went by so quickly. Like just like that finale episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Look at that. It wasn't me. It was Erica. I didn't do the salty thing. It was her. I just... wanted so much. <sighs> just I wanted take it, it out. to be longer. It didn't feel like 30 minutes to me. This is like not including like the after credits and everything mm. but uh, so much of it could just be just extended by a couple of minutes and it would have been even better i also didn't have an issue with the pacing i okay. thought that they kind of they touched on everything they needed to touch on and it wasn't like they kind of i don't feel like it was it was rushed i don't feel like they screamed through anything but a few extra minutes would have been nice just to to extend and elongate some of mm-hmm. the 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 more important scenes because technically we got everything. Well, okay. No, mm. sorry. We almost got everything. I just don't understand the logic behind it. Like you can do a one and a one hour, 20 minute opening uh, for yeah. the season. And then you do a 45 minute ending, which is not really 45 minutes because we know that it's credits and everything all together. Yeah. Uh, and it just doesn't make sense. I still think the first episode was so long because it was two episodes combined into one. Mm-hmm. Because they yeah. wanted that uh, Ellie's infected, but she's immune reveal to be the cliffhanger at the end HBO of episode one. That. Or our, yeah, our 20 minute long first episode. And then literally almost, yeah, a third of that length for your 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 season finale episode. Just doesn't make sense. There's just questionable decisions with that. I mean, the episode, I think it's episode five where Henry and Sam are revealed right at the end of the episode. That's episode uh, four. Is that is that four? Four, yeah. Right. So episode four, honestly, when you're looking at at how important some of the other episodes are, episode four could have been scrapped entirely in terms of how far it progresses the plot. You know, there's elements of, of episode four, sure, that you need, but those elements could be put into an, another episode and it doesn't have... So you've got this whole episode that's kind of not really important and that episode was longer than the season finale. And the season finale kind of is sacrificed in that way. Yeah. I mean, the, the the episode with Bill and Frank as well. I mean, it's a beautiful episode, but it doesn't actually do anything to further the plot of Joel and Ellie. It's a filler yeah. episode. So you want to spend an hour telling this beautiful romantic story oh, of, of Bill and Ted, with, of Bill and Frank, which I which I loved. I loved that episode, but it oh, it so largely good. was was unimportant to the overall story. And you look at the season finale, that's like half the length and kind of just, I, I don't want to say it was kind of slapped together. I think it was done really well, mm-hmm. but it just, you think about episode lengths and, and things and it's just, it's it's so weird how they've structured the, the episodes. Yeah. But to kind of start talking about like the depth of the episode, Ashley Johnson. Ashley, woo! For those who don't know, Ashley Johnson was, is 
one of the Ellie's. <laughs> She's the original Ellie uh, voice acting mocap. Um, original Ellie. So it was really sweet to see her being Anna because if you look at Anna and Bella, Bella looks like it could be an like like could be Ashley's child. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh. not only did they look great, but it just it was so nice seeing Ashley Johnson in there being Anna. There, there was something that made me laugh so much in that first scene. Um, I thought, uh, you know, obviously Lily's been very salty, salty about how little we've seen infected. Oh my god! <laughs> and we, we got the in this episode in the first scene, we got to see an infected deliver One. a baby. Basically, so, yeah. that was so thought, stupid. Yes. I'm sorry, that's, that's my problem. So it came off as really awkward that. until my husband was like, "Well, technically, she was." pushing real hard and i was like uh i guess that doesn't it's make one sense of, but also it's it was one weird. Of those, it's one of those moments that's so strange and you're just like uh it feels like it's wrong but it's entirely plausible yeah i loved yeah. as well in that scene how um anna wants to give ellie to marlene and she's like i i i cut the cord first and then i got bit i like how she lies there and kind of says like, yeah, 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 no, she's definitely not infected. Because that's obviously, you know, how, why Ellie's immune. Yeah. Which I thought was an interesting decision to kind of say why Ellie was immune. Because they don't ever go into that uh, detail in the game. Mm-mm. Poor Marlene just like getting ready to actually like shoot Anna. Was like, just went in with determination. Just like, I have to do this immediately. No was, hesitation. Whew, she couldn't. I thought that was really cool because it kind of, I don't know if it was intentional or maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I feel like it kind of uh, imitated Joel towards the end and how ruthless Mm -hmm. and non-hesitant he was. We got our giraffe. Yeah. It it did. Although I can't decide if that giraffe was CGI or like It was CGI. Because something about it was slightly off to where you're like, It was weird. That's CGI. But I also didn't mind. Also, I do want to... Okay, so here's a thing that they easily could have done. So this is supposed to be Night Dog Yellow. On the screen, it's coming off very orange. By promise in person, it's it's more yellow. Um, <laughs> we believe you. Thank you. Um, but when they were uh, getting inside the building to go up where the drafts are going to be, we have the guest star, the ladder. Yay. Um, so we get the ladder. But there's this uh like bar of wood where the ladder is that they're gonna go up. That that little plank could have very easily been painted naughty dog yellow. Although backstepping just a tad to the beginning, um, where we get back to Joel and Ellie. I love seeing the immediate thing with his rifle. Just here, Ellie, you hold that. Not even a second thought, confident, just handing the rifle to Ellie, and she's like, Yeah, sure. A quick Easter egg I want to point out because uh, I'm in Utah. Um, and so they're in Salt Lake City. And when they look out through, well, pretty much anywhere that they look out into the city, there is something very important missing out there. Um, so if you recall in the games, when you look out, there is uh, the LDS Mormon Temple, which is this really cool multi towered uh building and that's in the background of the video game and when we get into the show and they're showing us the surroundings that mormon temple is gone it is nowhere to be found in the scene so i'm curious to people in the comments and the live chat as to why we think that that's gone because that is a real location in utah the the mormon temple is very prominent very famous and I have no idea why it was taken out. In Utah if or in Salt like, Lake City? In Salt Lake City. Okay. It's it's real. The Mormon temple is are there, there are the, In the show, are the, rest, are the rest of the buildings right? I I didn't pay attention to that because the only thing I noticed was missing mm-hmm. was the Mormon temple. And so I, I don't know if it was like a, a legal thing that they couldn't have it there or they were just like, this doesn't feel important enough to put in. I thought that was just really interesting because that's a that's a huge part of salt lake anyway seattle without the sky needle kind of thing kind of yeah it's almost like yeah it turns into kind of like a tourist destination even though uh non 
members of the religion can't go inside. It's still a tourist destination because it's absolutely okay. beautiful and intricate, stunning. Interesting. Um, so I'm gonna have to do some research on that and see see what was up with that. Weird, Don't weird, know why weird. I said it like that. <clears throat> it's fine. It works. <laughs> uh, I I don't know. I for me the whole thing felt like that. You know, of course they're gonna put in the graphs in. I I was just joking throughout the I know, episodes where also, I said like you never know. Because, you never like, know. You never know. But I was I was joking. Like I mean, it was obvious that it's gonna be in there. Uh, but it it kind of felt like that yet again. Uh, we are choosing uh scenes that are more into the character building and they left out mm -hmm. something huge from the game uh and i mean huge uh that uh you guys talked about it in the previous episodes uh i you know i'm gonna talk about it now there's an Do entire it. scene where they have to go through the tunnels and that's the only way they can uh get to the hospital uh and obviously that is something that is formed with infected uh and that's uh where i'm saying that you had one hour 20 minute on the first episode one hour 20 minute on the third episode and you're giving us 45 minutes uh and it's gone it's completely gone uh we did not see once that ellie cannot swim of course she mentions it at one point and that's it uh but it was so important in the game uh mm -hmm. it happens twice not just once twice we didn't see any of it uh where she nearly drowns because obviously she nearly drowns uh, uh when uh they fall from the bridge and she nearly drowns here uh and that's how they get to the fireflies and the fireflies save them uh basically here uh i told you that when you they did. gonna when they're gonna drop that flash grenade that's it that's how they're gonna get to the hospital uh they're not gonna go told you i should be writing for this show um <laughs> uh it's i'm i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna read this tweet because i sent it to you guys and uh, we oh. had a huge conversation about this on twitter with how little infected there seems to be the world doesn't even seem to need a vaccine showing this little infected has taken away such a massive part of ellie's importance away from her uh and only uh having a hive mind in one episode was such a missed opportunity spot on spot I on I'm that's, inclined to agree. That's that's why it's my problem. Because people are like, oh, because it was the action. No. It's not just that. Like, you know, obviously, there could be so much more action in here. Uh, mm -hmm. Even if, if if it's just brief, even if it doesn't happen to Joel or Ari, or uh, even if you see it in the background. I said it so many times. At least make me feel like that there's a threat of the infected. Yeah, even if there's mm. a feeling of the threat, even though we don't get to experience the threat. Exactly. That could easily happen because, you know, there is that whole argument about, no, like, there's not enough action. Or, and some people are like, oh, well, that's not the point. It's like, well, no, it's the threat it's of the, threat. the thing. Yeah. That that's the most important part. Yep. Um, It feels empty. It, yeah, an empty threat. <laughs> It feels empty. The, the whole, I mean, even the whole thing feels empty without them. Let's be fair. Like the way they can just walk through uh, Kansas City, the way they can, you know, walk through parts uh, of of everything, basically, without worrying about infected uh, being around. It's like, okay. And then even in, even in this episode, they walk through Salt Lake City and like yeah, nothing. literally nothing. in the wide open the wide open and there, there's nothing salt lake is densely populated yeah because densely. i i would understand it if we wouldn't have many infected around jackson and secluded parts like that i i would understand it i would be like okay yeah, yeah kind of makes sense but but then put them in the cities at least yeah I, well Joel kind of talks about it in a way where he's like uh, pointing out like the places where they were bombed. And they didn't even hit the places that they intended to. And I was like, I was like, so did they not get the infected? Like, I don't know. That whole thing felt like it was trying to explain why there were no infected, but it didn't explain why there was no infected. No. The, the series is focused so much, focused so much on just the story. And the problem with it is like I've I've not had an issue with with the action that we've seen in the show. I, I think that either. we've we've seen we've seen enough action. I, I I 
I didn't need to see a lot of action in the show. Mm -hmm. But it's a great point saying that, like, why why do they even need this vaccine? There's no infected around. You know, and it's kind of like you you could make the argument and say, oh, well, there's definitely affected around that you just don't see them because, you know, Joel and Ellie, on, and Ellie are not around them or whatever. But like, well, as an audience, we still need to see the thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Jaws is scary because you see the shark's fin. It's yep. not attacking you all the time, but you see the shark's fin and you know, oh, we can't go in the water right now. Jaws is scary because of that. Uh, you know, any horror movie is scary because you can hear whatever's mm -hmm. haunting you or whatever you can hear it it's always there it's ever present but that's i was going to save this for like my episode ranking breakdown kind of thing but that's my that's been like my only real issue with the with the show is that i mean we had a lot of infected in like episode one and two and then we've just not seen them since yep. with yeah. like one awesome scene with the freaking bloater and like dozens and of that's infected it. but Weren't we promised a new seen. infected that we hadn't seen before? We didn't, yeah, we I was going to say that then. as well. We didn't even we didn't get any new infected. <laughs> nope. uh, I was going to say that we didn't see a shambler, but then I remember the shamblers are only in part two. In part um, two, yeah, 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 which makes sense. We wouldn't see them, but I mean that that's the thing is it's like I mean, yeah, and it's even a after... massive part of the game and 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 the story as well is because. The whole journey of Joel and Ellie is to get Ellie to the Firefly so they can develop a vaccine to combat the infected. And it's like, well, we haven't seen any infected here. So what's... Yeah. What are we combating? Like, exactly. what, what, what is the threat? Where is it? But basically, if there's so little of them, because it seems that way, why didn't they rebuild like they did with Jackson? It just doesn't make sense that that people are like not rebuilding already. It's it's like okay, but it doesn't seem to be a threat anymore. Like, I were mean, we, the... were we also promised more infected in this episode? Were we? Wasn't it like a thing? I I think someone actually said like, oh, we're we gonna see like a ton of infected. I don't know, but like well, maybe it was like a ton of, of action. I think that's what I'm thinking of. Summarize. I've been going on this like villain arc almost, <laughs> but I gotta say I completely agree with Nick. Like I didn't have issue. Like now that like it's over and I've collected my thoughts, I completely agree with Nick. Like I I don't think I had issue with the immense like with the lack of violence itself because I agree with the two of you that they're that the threat is what was missing it even just the implication of the infected and how big it is and scary it is that's mm. what was missing and that's that that's it that's the thing that i was feeling well, what's next the hospital scene um i think they did a uh, very well um it yeah, was it's completely believable that joel suddenly <laughs> goes john wick on a ton of people and uh... i don't i don't agree because of the way they built it up specifically and i'm talking specifically this episode where he talks about he was the one who missed and tried mm. to unalive himself oh, that was himself. a great scene as well that mm. was fantastic just there were these little like nuances and moments where he was you could feel his connection to Ellie so strongly, especially with the story. And she's like, well, the time must heal things. And he's like, it wasn't time that healed me as he's looking at Ellie crying and well, uh, almost crying. And she's, she, mm. you can just feel the love there. And that is especially prominent because Pedro and Bella are really good friends. They are, they love each other so much and you could feel it in that scene too where when he realizes they're going to kill her he's like i simply can't live without her it's the yeah. humanity versus her is the easiest choice he's ever made he needs her needs her and to me the the build-up between that relationship and those little moments that were leading up to that moment didn't feel out of place to me especially after last episode as well it just felt like a continuation of this growing and impending anger that that this daughter is gonna be taken away from him for a second time mm. and i loved him going through the hospital scene because it was like nerding out I'm so excited because it was like it was like the game because you go in and you just you have no thoughts 
you're just all right there's one kill them you just go through one by one killing them and i saw the the ar that one of the people were using i was like he better pick that up he better pick that up the rifle runs out he goes up to somebody he shot finishes him off with i believe it was ellie's knife finishes was, him yeah. off mm. yeah and takes the <laughs> ar and i'm like yes got the AR. but i also fucking hated that gun in the game because it just was the kick was insane i hated it that was gun. crazy but it was great having him pick it up and picking up stuff along the way. And it was a little bit of a redemption moment for me because he's the guy was like, okay, I'm putting down my gun. Don't kill me. And he was like, no, and kills him. And to me, that was a redemption moment of when he didn't kill the old man to where he was like, uh, no, you're a, you're a threat to me. I'm you're a threat to me. And I'm going to kill you. Mm. And I, Ugh, I was looking forward to it so much. And as soon as like they cut out like the stuff with the infected and the bloaters went straight to the hospital, I was like, they're giving us more time in the hospital for him to kill people. I also really, really loved uh, that scene. It's one of my favorite scenes in the game just to see Joel just go brutally murder yeah. people. Uh, and it, it worked really well in the show. And I was, I was saying this earlier uh, in earlier episodes where... Joel has seemed really soft in this series. And I've been like, that's like, it's so weird. Why is he so soft? And I said, it could work really well because when we do see him go on the rampage at the end, it could just mean that much more because it's yeah. like, whoa, this guy's just, this guy's just lost it. And it makes sense. It's like, yeah, he's completely lost it. But now it's because he's emotionally connected to this, uh, to this little girl, Ellie, and will do anything to keep her mm -hmm in his life and yeah. i think it works so well for the show obviously it works really well in the game as well but very differently mm -hmm. uh yes. but i think for the show it was executed perfectly and we got a really really cool scene i love how the music plays and the sounds kind of dim a little bit yeah everything's in the background almost and it's kind of like what joel's experiencing like the world is quiet and he's just got a singular focus of i must get to ellie mm -hmm. and oh it was so good but i'm really excited for us binging the show to see how it really all works together. Um, I think that's going to be very telling as to the story and pacing itself. But we get inside and we get inside the hospital room. The doctor comes up, says, don't do it. Don't do it. And no second thought just takes him out. No second thought at all. Takes him out. And uh, two little things about this, uh, this particular scene. Um, uh, in the game, you have a choice. One of the only choices, you can choose to kill the nurses or not. Uh, personally, for yep. me, I never did kill the nurses, but you can. Um, one of the nurses, <laughs> particularly the one, uh, I believe, who takes out the IV, the nurse on the right, is Laura Bailey. Yes. And if you don't know Laura Bailey, um, she, <laughs> where have you been? <laughs> you live under a rock? Yeah. The critical role she is best one of the best friends with like ashley johnson and that whole crew she also plays abby uh in the last of us part two um she does the mocap and the voice obviously a uh, different um body capture was somebody else like the huge muscles and stuff um but laura bailey i just like it was so fun because i was watching it and i was like those eyes look really familiar and I had just been watching some Critical Role stuff earlier today. And so when it came to the credits, I see Laura Bailey's name. I'm like, it's so funny. It was, it was a quick, cute little cameo that I hope everybody has caught on to by now. And I, I loved it. If they watch the credits, then for, if you for watch sure. the credits, you better watch the credits. It is always important. There's it's many people working on these shows. So, you know. Give yes. them the respect and watch the credits. I also yeah. was watching Critical Role stuff earlier, and I love <laughs> Laura Bailey. She's one of my absolute favorite, favorite, favorites. And I didn't notice it was her. I'm so bleak. Oh. <laughs> I, I mean, it's not that obvious. It's not that obvious. You guys, it's like she's wearing a mask and everything. Like, But um, you guys said on, on Discord, you guys said, oh my gosh, it was Laura Bailey. And I was like, what? <laughs> so I need, to go back and, uh, I need to go back and check that. <laughs> It was, it was. It's it's always nice. Wendy. But what a cool, what a what a cool thing to include right? Laura in the show. That's yeah. so awesome. As they I should have. As they should have. Uh, Laura is great. Deserved. Yeah, it's true. But yeah, from from here on, 
own words, I think. Well, the beginning as well, to be fair, uh, as they are going through Salt Lake City as well. It's it's almost scene to scene uh, the same. Um, obviously, they changed the whole massacre part uh, because you're playing that like you know it's mm-hmm. gonna it's gonna be a different experience for everyone uh so that makes sense that they they're gonna change that uh but yeah the i'm still very upset that he kills marlene i i i hated it in the game uh i mean i hated this whole part in the game uh but uh i i hated that he kills marlene i was like ah oh, it God. sucks but why? also i don't think he why, really why? had that much of a connection to her anyways to really desire to keep her alive it's like if you're gonna come after her, you're a threat. So, well, yeah, obvi- I do understand his motives, but I'm like, yeah. Marlene is such a great character. Marlene's a great character, uh, and and I think they could have done so much more with her. Like, I wonder if, okay, if she wouldn't have given out any sound alerting Joel that she is still alive, uh, would she have survived? <laughs> or oh, absolutely. You know, I've thought about that so much. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like, ah, uh, like, why? <laughs> you, sh- you, you should have. Just... See, that's that. That's really interesting about like experiences with players because, like, you. So you wanted to see more of Marlene, like yes. more of her, yeah. her story engine. Because I thought it was the most satisfying thing ever in the game and the show. I love when when Joel kills Marlene. I, I it's not like like I hated her or anything. I just I, I kind of works for me in the story. Yeah. Mm. So it's interesting, like player experiences, how you how you like things differently. Yeah. And yeah. I mean that's that's the end of the show, the end of the game. It's it's a very divisive um part of the story. So it is gonna divide people in a lot of different ways. But yeah, Joel killing Marlene, that scene is is really cool. It's really tense, but it's also I don't know. For me, it was satisfying because I was like, I don't know, Marlene. I I hated the fact that she was like, oh, I need to protect Ellie and like, I'm going to do everything to keep Ellie alive. And then at the end, she's kind of just like, yeah, let's operate on her brain and kill her. Yeah. Uh, and she kind it's... of seemed a little bit remorseless. I was, that's, I, not, that's always, I, I always agree. a reason I, I don't like Marlene. I don't agree. I don't think that's true. If only like, you know, it's tiny spoiler, uh, but uh, we have a look back at that scene in part two of the game. She's a child. Not some Petri dish. You think I don't... I'm aware of the situation. And you're okay with killing her? No, I'm okay with developing a vaccine that'll help save millions of lives. How many fireflies have died for less? That was their choice. Where Marlene argues with Jerry uh, of of having to do it this way, and and she That's is right. she is really trying to be like there must be another way, uh, and I think it's more a show for Joel, like you know, you have to accept it like I did kind of way. But I don't think she's like, you know, mm-hmm. just numb to the fact that Ellie is going to die on that operating table. I totally yeah. forgot about that flashback. Yeah. I'm I'm like, um, you know, I, I think a lot of people look very harshly at Marlene. Uh, and I don't think it's it's interesting. It's, you know, correct to look at her that way. I, I don't think she's heartless or anything. Interesting. It's a nice binary because I think Marlene does love Ellie and and wants only the best for her. And it's it's a really nice bi- binary and like comparison between Marlene and Joel because Marlene is willing to, albeit reluctantly, she hates the fact she has to do it, but she's willing to sacrifice Ellie, whereas Joel is not. Um, and yeah. I mean, obviously, I think Joel's maybe got a stronger connection to Ellie, but it, it's, it's interesting to see how those two characters you know, view that situation differently. I, I will say this again because, you know, I, I say it every time with the game. If you won't morally question what Joel does here. Trolley question. It's awful. <laughs> I I, yeah. I obviously we love Ellie and uh, on, until we are put in a similar situation, which will probably never happen to any of us. Uh, it's, it's really hard to say who's correct in this scenario because on one hand Ellie might be the cure for the whole thing and I think they do a much better job explaining here 
why she is immune uh because they they do actually explain like you know this this is the idea behind it uh that yeah. they do in the game because in the game you can feel that they are just kind of in the dark about it but they know that something is up they mentioned that uh she has a parasite in her brain uh being the whole reason behind her immunity but uh i i think it was smarter here how they did it like uh you know get uh, on getting bitten uh while she was giving birth and uh, therefore the cordyceps think that Ellie already has a cordyceps so therefore that cordyceps is the immunity uh, mm -hmm. that's needed for but like you know I think there's this question of the word versus Ellie and of course there's that famous quote that uh, Joel's word is Ellie so of course uh, he's, he's going to save Ellie uh, but at the same time that scene is awful yeah. The way he goes around and and just literally kills everyone without without question or anything, uh, that's when I say that Joel is incredibly cold blooded in the game, uh, and and we would have and that's why uh, for me this scene here is a bit like out of place because we didn't got that uh, in the series. It's it's because of this. I hate no. to play that part. I hate it. It's hard and. Um... It's there's uh there's an after show thing where uh craig and neil and you know people kind of just talk about the episode and filming and little things um you'll have to you'll have to go and look it up and watch uh kind of like the very end bit where craig talks about the show to kind of get the full effect i'm just going to kind of summarize where he says um something along the lines of um it's more important that we understand why joel did it and I think they did a very, very good job of explaining it, of why, why did Joel do it? Whether it's right or wrong is the biggest discourse in over a decade with this game that everybody yeah. argues over. And because there is no right answer, the only thing that's important for us to understand is why Joel did it. And when kind of move on to the to the second part um but go and watch that because there's a lot more to his comments but although I, his I lie is loved... awful here just much worse than in the game because it's it they added that like you know the raiders uh attacked the they hospital. did add that part yeah yeah it wasn't yeah, in the game true. i think that makes it even worse like you're even covering off for yourself like jesus christ because yeah. <laughs> I, I thought i thought there was a nice touch as well because it explains why because i mean in the in the game, he never says that that you know Marlene and the Fireflies are dead. So why you know would Ellie kind of you know sort of just believe him and say, okay, cool, I guess Marlene's never gonna reach out and try and contact yeah, me so again. Yeah, so it did kind of. So that makes a lot more sense to explain mm. it a little bit better. But I just wanted I wanted to say as well, just based on that sort of idea of Joel's choice, I think what's so nice about the story and what I've always loved is um, how morally it divides people. Was it right? Was mm -hmm. it wrong? Blah, blah, blah. And I don't think like for this story, I don't think that matters. I think that it's, it's, you obviously can have the conversation and decide for yourself, but I think that that's, what's, what's really nice. If Joel at that point doesn't care if what he's doing is right or wrong, he just wants to get Ellie. Mm -hmm. uh, and that sort of, it, it's really interesting as well. It kind of um, it's, there's, there's a study, I think it's called the moral dilemma or something like that. It's the trolley. Um, where yeah, yeah. yeah. The trolley? I'm yeah, not sure if it's... it's what's the trolley? It. It, yeah, so it's kind of like, or a trolley or a train, you are going down one track, but there's, it splits into two and you have to pick what track to go down. One is one person mm. that you love and care about, a family member or something. The other one is just a whole group of random people you have to choose mm. which track to go on and go through and kill. And which ones to yeah, save. So that's, I mean, that's, that's a great thing. Cause it's like, I mean, which one do you choose? And I mean, it's like most of us would say, oh no, you definitely choose your loved one. But then it's like, well, now you're killing multiple people. It's like, it's like there's, there's another one that I've seen, which I think is really cool as well. It's like you, you can either kill one person, but you have to like see it and watch it and watch that person die. Or you have to kill a bunch of people, but you don't have to see it. Like you never have to live through it kind of thing. Yeah. Little things like that, I think, is such fascinating question, character studies and questions to sort of say. And then, yeah, Joel has that that question presented to him, so he can save this one girl who he deeply cares for now, yeah, or mm -hmm. potentially let her be sacrificed and potentially 
save the world. And they did it so much better. I remember I, I told you guys a long time ago, I think like episode one, I said, I always, always, it irked me so much. I hated in the game where you find like an audio diary or something. And yeah. in that audio diary, it says that they found a bunch of other people that are, are immune and uh, it's not, the vaccine's not been working with them. That cheapens everything so much. I like how in the show that they are like, Ellie is the one. She is the only one that that this can, that this, that this will work with and everything. So it's yes. like, there is no alternative. And that's great for Joel's character as well. Cause he does, he even says in the game, in the show as well, he says to Marlene, find someone else. And Marlene's like, there is no one else. And that makes it so much more powerful. It I hate that small. in the game. I hate that collectible in the game so much. And I, I just want to get it. in the code and remove it. I hate it. I mean, you it, loved it, really? I did. I did as well because it makes sense. There won't we be agree. just one one person. Yeah, we do. Uh, there won't be just one person who's immune. There might be just one person who they discover that's immune. Yeah. But it's just like you know, Logist- logistically, there Log- should be more it, more yeah. people that are so immune. It, for me. Logistically. When you find that recording, it made sense. It was like, mm. you know, maybe it's a bit out of place in a way like, you know, and they were all found by the fireflies, I guess. So, you know, or, or whoever really. Yeah. But uh, altogether, it just makes sense that it's not only Ellie who's yeah. immune. Like, to just me. mathematically, yeah. it's like that. I'm to. sure there's more. 100%. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> so, yeah. like, and, I, uh, and I liked it because I liked that it justified Joel's choice because not only does Ellie not get a choice that is very clear um I, I think from the end like she would have I think she would have ended up going through it but we know that she didn't get a choice up until then it just kind of happened um but to me it justified Joel's choice to do it because it's like well if it hasn't worked up until now with these dozens of people why now why would it why would it magically work now? So what's the point of sacrificing her when it's never worked before? And see and that's that's that's, that's, my that's why I never liked that that audio recording in the game <laughs> because I don't want something else to justify Joel's choice. It it kind of it feels like it 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 cheapens it. It gives Joel an out to say, like, oh yeah, see, they failed a bunch of other people. Why would I want to risk Ellie? Let's get into the episode ranking. <laughs> Erica, yeah, let's hear it. Um, it's gonna sound interesting, but I'm actually gonna give this a nine out of ten. Okay. I I genuinely enjoyed it and the choices that they made, um, and how they did everything. I thought it was wonderful, especially like uh coming from the game, uh, the stuff that we missed. I didn't think was the worst because mm-hmm. we got to have a little bit more of other things. But yeah, I'm gonna give it a nine out of ten. Okay, Nick. Yeah, for me, I I'm actually also going to give it a nine out of ten. Uh, I think the episode itself was was really well crafted, for for like forty four minutes, I think, including credits. It it actually yeah. got through quite a lot, um, and it didn't feel like too many things were rushed uh, and things like that. There were little things that that irked me, little things that felt out of place. Um, there was one thing I I meant to mention earlier as well. I I. Throughout the season, I couldn't put my finger on it, but I always felt like maybe the acting was bad in some ways. There were just certain scenes. I was like, this isn't working. And it was the scenes where they copied it directly from the games. And I think it's just when they deliver the same lines from the game, they deliver it differently. And I'm not used to hearing it like that. So that was, there were a few times I was like, wow, that acting is bad. No, it's just done in a different way. It's actually really good. Just different. So there's a few things like that. And I think I kind of compartmentalized that today. So it's a little bit... A little bit better, uh, but it was it was cool. I loved Ashley Johnson's uh, scene at the beginning. I thought it was amazing, and uh, Joel's brutal murder. It was pretty awesome. So this episode, the actual TV episode, was a nine out of ten, and I'm very excited to do the binge watch and give the entire series a rating. I'm giving it an eight out of ten, uh, mainly because uh, I do feel like that it needed. It needed an extra bit in there, uh, and I'm not gonna let that go. I will stand by that that uh, the infected don't feel like a threat. It's definitely like before anyone comes for me, it's not bad. I'm not saying it's bad at all, uh, but I think seeing its fault 
or the force that I think our thoughts is is you know it's still there uh and I still mm-hmm. think it's it's a great adaptation uh but I think they missed a really big opportunity uh with the whole thing not just this episode in- there's this there's a few there's a few examples of that throughout the series of wasted opportunities and uh missed opportunities and wasted elements. I mean there's so many things that are mentioned and completely dropped. I think that's probably my biggest like uh not criticism, but the thing that irked me the the most throughout the entire series is the things that were started and just ended. Like episode one, which all where, where the, the guy scans Ellie, finds out she was infected and then points a gun at her and Joel has the flashback of Sarah dying. We didn't see any more. I mean, we did kind of see a flashback where he kind of panic sees attacks. Sarah later on in the series and panic attacks. But then like Sam's leukemia was picked up once and uh-huh. dropped. No. Yep. <laughs> um, there was, there, oh, there was, there was a few things. I'll, I'll, I'll I'm going to put together a list and <laughs> when we do the series review episode, I'm going to have a whole list on parchment yeah and yes. i will i will read them all out <laughs> and uh, you know read them out here here i say yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. uh but i i think the biggest and i will call it that the biggest mistake they did is is sidelining the infected so and i the lily friend. was lily was salty about that from the beginning and i was like just relax Lily, I know, Sam. <laughs> There's going to be so many more infected. And I think since then, we've had like two. We were proven one wrong. in Left Behind and mm-hmm. one in today's episode. Yep. I was like, relax, Ellie. We're going to get more. And we got two more. You two. were right, Lily. <laughs> well, if you didn't know already, you're watching this on Couch Soup. Um, And if you would be so kind as to join us as a member, you get, well, not yet but other things like you can get early access to shows like this uh, i think a day or so before they release um there's some other projects coming up you can get some uh exclusive things information whatnot uh join our wonderful community um and you know if you don't it's whatever but it's cool you know if you don't we love you anyways <laughs> But yes. Drew, Drew approved on each one of Drew our fingers. Approved. Yes, yes. It's, <laughs> we're going to write Drew approved. Uh, but uh, <laughs> anyway, we're going to back for at least two more episodes. So don't don't cry just yet. We're going to see our faces two more times. Well, there's what are we a, doing in those two episodes? binge episode, but there's another one. What? Ooh, yes. I wonder what that could be. Me too. I hope everyone is going to be happy. Uh, we will be, that's for sure. <laughs> Just putting it out there. Uh, anyway, this was all. Uh, and with this, uh, we wrap our little Rest of Us podcast on the official uh, end uh, with season one. Uh, but we're going to be back for season two, so you're not going to get rid of us. Just yeah. putting it out there. Uh, anyway, take care and endure and survive. Endure and survive. Endure and survive. Endure and survive.